Welcome to May. We're kicking off this month with a public service announcement from the mayor. And we know that 90% of the people listening do not hit subscribe and download. Shame. Just hit subscribe. We don't even, don't even hit the download. We're not worried about that. Hit subscribe. <laughs> All right, Chitch. And I'm in love with this good life. Can't give it up. Make it to the top and keep climbing. I want to live it up. The good life. I'm coming up. I'm coming up. The good life. Good life. Oh, good life. Good life. Good life. Good life. Hey. Boom. Coming in hot. Chichi, what's going on, man? We got a lot to talk about today, brother, huh? We got so much to talk about today. I wore my uh, Grateful Warrior shirt for a reason because I'm gonna. We're gonna start with a Grateful Warrior, dude. Freaking Mike Trout. Oh, such a bummer, man. Such a bummer that he's banged up with the meniscus. Mm, so frustrating too when you saw his press conference. You know, he was looked like he was about to cry. Like, hey, dude. It reminds me of DeGrom. It doesn't matter what these guys make, man. They're human beings. They love the game of baseball. And when you continue to get injured year after year, there are big injuries that you're going to miss significant time. There's nothing more frustrating, dude. Nothing more frustrating. So a guy like Mike Trout, who's off to a lead in the league in homers, 10 homers out the gates, got six stolen bases. You're looking to have a big year, did everything he could, spring training, off season, ready to go, and then bam, tears his meniscus in his knee and is going to have to have surgery on it. So yeah. just a total bummer for Trout and baseball, really, to tell you the truth. Bummer for Trout and baseball and baseball fans. I mean, the guy plays his butt off. We were so excited. We've been so excited because he worked so hard this offseason. He went right. and he played in all those spring games. I'm not calling this that fault. I think he was doing what he needed to do to try to be healthy, and this just happened. Like, it's just – it's such a bummer, man. It's just yeah. such a bummer. That's a bummer. Dude, th there's something about, I'll never forget when I was a young, when I was young coming up, I remember Barry Larkin telling me, wait till you turn 30. Cause I think he like blew out his Achilles at 30 and you know, injury after injury. He's like, when you turn 30, your body starts to change. The wear and tear that you've had over the years starts to show up. And I was like, ah, man, I'm 24. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be, you know, perfect. <laughs> the rest of the rest of my career. And all of a sudden, dude, it was, it was real, man. I, I remember like, Right around 30, I had a pelvic fracture. Then I, you know, I was coming back from a shoulder surgery. And then I remember in 2004, I kept tearing my, I kept pulling my calf. I had to go on the IL for a pulled calf and, you know, stuff like that. Then the hamstrings and the quads. Then I had, I had 2004, I had meniscus surgery after the season, which was, you know, it took me like six weeks to recover. It's still not great. Dude. I still have swelling in that knee. So it's like, yeah. you know, whatever. But like the meniscus is, also a, uh, a tendon that you don't really need that much. So like you could almost take it out and be fine. But, it, but if you, you know, if it's torn, it hurts. So yeah. it's tough to play on, but yeah, I, I saw trout. There was a pass ball the other night and he was on second and he went to third. You could see him limping. Then he scored good ball. Got away. He scored and he was going fast, but you could see something wasn't right. And ah, it's just a bummer, man. It's a total bummer. Yeah, I mean, he he kind of walked through the whole thing. He's like, I don't know when it happened. He goes, I, I felt a little kink, and then I kept playing, kept hitting, scored yeah. that run, you know, big run, you know, in that game too. The other one thing I want to uh, want to say about his injury history because I know people are like, oh, he's always hurt, whatever. I, I look back at all the years he's been hurt. You know, he had the thumb, he had just freaky inju injuries. Oh, if you look back at his career just on paper. It looks like he really, really, really has been hurt. But don't forget, he's playing on a team that by the time he was healthy enough to maybe come back, they were way out of it. Right. So there's a lot of games missing from Mike Trout's, you know, uh, uh, resume that are really more just like, all right, well, let's just shut him down for the rest of the season. So I hope nobody, you know, sometimes the, 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 the stuff you see on paper isn't exactly what you see in real life because – he could have come back at least from a couple of those injuries, but they shut him down. Yeah. Well, was yeah. Paying him hundreds of millions of dollars. And, and look at look at the years, bro, that he got 700 plate appearances. I believe, like, MVP, runner-up MVP. Like, oh, th his biggest years are when he's, you know, stayed on the field. Because if Mike Trout gets six to 700 at-bats, dude, 
you're going to see some stupid, stupid numbers, and that's what we've seen over the years. So, if he never plays another baseball game again, which he will, and we hope he will, yeah, he's going to Cooperstown. He's in today. He's in. Yeah, he can walk. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Walk right in there. Even Clayton Kershaw, they're in. Grab that Babe Ruth bat with the glove. You put the gloves on. You grab the Babe Ruth bat in, in the yeah. basement. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we wish him the best, man. Like, golly, it's just it's bad. He'll be back. Hopefully, he'll be back, dude. It's I don't think I, it shouldn't be a season-ending surgery. Correct. No, that's what they're saying. They're saying he will return in 2024. So we're wishing him the best, dude. Mike Trout, get back here. Yeah. Because uh, the game game loves you and the game needs you. I say. Yeah, I say too. Here, here. Here, here. Okay. Uh, one guy who has not finished two games. Here's what happened on this guy's uh, on this guy's last few days. Gets ejected from a baseball game. Goes on a mayor's office. <laughs> I was gonna say comes on the mayor's office podcast. Then gets ejected from the next baseball game. <laughs> We're talking about Pat Murphy. Dude, Maybe we, hey, we should bring him on again today. Maybe he get ejected tonight, too. See yeah, what happens. I got, uh, when the brawl broke out last night, people were tweeting at you and me. I don't know if you saw it. They were like, mayor's office, mayor's office curse. <laughs> <laughs> we had nothing to do with it. But Pat Murphy, man, I'll tell you one thing. We had him on yesterday. I yeah. think, I think that, you know, the, a team – is identified by the 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 type of leader that they have in front of him. And Pat Murphy, if you haven't listened to yesterday's interview, he is a tough, strong, strong-willed, tough dude. And that team is pretty tough, dude, and they're doing really well. But a lot went down in the last couple of days. Yeah, and and, and they won 8-2, eight, eight to two, too, which is huge. And uh, and I also think, too, brother, like like Murph said it on the, on the podcast, that – your team will take on your personality. And I look at the Brewers now, I'm like, dude, they're out there. You know, they were in there. They were in it. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and he was talking about Reese Hoskins was right in it too. Because the problem is when you're the first baseman, you're always closest to brawls. Like every every oh, brawl we had, I was, I'm the first one in. I remember, I remember we, we threw it, uh, Scott Sullivan threw it, Brian Hunter in Colorado. And dude, I went in, I was the first one there and I looked to my left and here comes a freaking sea of Rockies. And I'm just like, Wait, you know, just wore it like literally, like huddled down to the field position, had to wear it. But you're the first one there, so you look at Reese Hoskins right in the middle of it while he was, you know, at first base, you know, trying to protect, you know, his pitcher and stuff. But like I said, the, 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 I, lo- I love the Brewers' toughness. I love how they're playing. They're playing great baseball, and uh, that team has really taken on Murph's. Uh, and they don't forget, dude, they've been in the postseason five of the last six years. Two of those years, so in, in over a seven-year span, they missed the postseason twice by one game. So they should have – could be seven years in a row. Yeah. Murphy Murphy, Murphy joined them in 16, bro. Oh, look at you. 16 to 23, they almost made the postseason every year. Mm. Just saying. I, like I know count, Counts is really good. He gets the credit. Don't think that Pat Murphy wasn't the one dude that just came in as the bench coach who really is the guy those guys lean on. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And these are two grounder teams. I got to be honest. I don't think the umpire and crew has had a really good series here. I think they've kind of been in the middle of it instead of being the kind of like dissolve the stress of the situation. I think the umps have given a little more stress. Started a couple nights ago with that that interference call on a run. Then, you know, Tampa winds up winning a game one nothing. Pat Murphy said that night, uh, He's like, we should at least still be tied right now and playing, but they took a run away from us. So they're they're heated a little, and Tampa's playing as hard as they can. They're in the toughest division yeah. in baseball. Ke- Kevin Cash said a good thing after the game, he, 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 and, he, and I was kind of a – it was a subtle dig to how the game was played now, which I kind of liked. He was like, hey, listen, the way these guys show each other up nowadays, how are you supposed to police it? I like that. These guys are trying to police each other. You know, Siri goes deep earlier in the game, gives the, you know, gives the money shot when he crosses home plate. You know, mm-hmm. he does that stuff. And, yeah. you know, guys are just pimping and flip bat flipping out the wazoo. And then a the guy gets hit and the umps, like, throw him out of the game. So, like, dude, like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm going to say, you know, back when I played not that long ago, you policed it. If mm-hmm. somebody did something you didn't like, you drilled them. Everyone moved on. The umpires were good. Everybody's good. Now the umpires are trying to make, uh, you know, decisions that oh i think he threw it on yeah he definitely did uh hunter wendell stat uh uh the guy uh somebody at the end of the dugout so i throw out the manager and it, you know stop 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, stop. At the end of the day, like, don't escalate. The game, let the game police itself sometimes, as far as like last night, 3 0 on Siri, perfect time to drill him perfectly right in the leg if, if that's what you want to do, if you felt like he showed you up. Okay, good. We move on. Now you got Gucci, you got Guccione coming in, throwing out the freaking, uh, throwing out the pitcher, then throws out Murph, who Murph yeah. should have got tossed. If you're a manager, you got to get tossed there because that's ridiculous. So I don't know. And I thought Kevin Cash's point was great. Hey, man, what's the line? Got, guys are punching guys out now and dancing off the mound. Guys are going deep that are hitting 220, and they're they're doing money things and flip, bat flipping, yeah. and and then they the players try to police the game, and then the umpires come in and throw people out. It's like it's a, it's insanity a little bit. I don't know. Like, really what is, is the, what is the line? At least you used to at least you used to know the line, Chinch. At least you used to know. Okay, I like I said. My rookie year, we hit Scott Rowland. He had just homer, two homers, three for three. He gets hit. He gets. We hit him in the butt. Perfect spot. Rowland goes to first. No one thing. Rowland then takes somebody out at second, like you're supposed to do. Uh, you know, and I'm leading off the next day. It's my rookie year. Mark Leiter's on the mound. I've told this story. Mark Leiter's on the mound. Al's brother looks like a serial killer. I'm like, this guy <laughs> looks like he's wants to kill somebody. Looks like I'm his prey. <laughs> so sure enough, dude, he hits me with 96 right in the rib. Boom. I knew it was coming. Both teams knew it was coming. It's the way the game's played. I took it in the ribs, put my head down, ran to first because I did not want an altercation with Mark Leiter, ran to first base, and it was over. And it's over. But nowadays, you just don't know. When's it over? When it's not over? It, uh, was that too much? Did he show you up? Do you felt show? Are you having a bad day? Now you felt showed up? Uh, are you going to fist pump off the mound? What? Where, what's the line? There is no line now, dude. So, like, I don't know. Just you, a guy hits a guy now, you just toss him. I love the passion for me right now. But, but yeah. you're right. And now, now here, what happens? Wait, are they playing again today? They have one more game. Yeah, today? one more, I think. Okay. So now today's game is already a mess, right? There, there, there's got to be, I guarantee there's warnings before the game. And now your pitcher's going out there and he can't go into the inside side of part of the plate. And, and you, today's game is already affected by last night's ejections and things like that, I think. That's oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. There's gonna be warnings everywhere. Hey, we, they, they'll let you know when. We'll let you know before the game that we're not. You know, the umpires will say we're not putting up with anything today. So, eh, whatever. I like the old school fighting man. Yeah, yeah, dude. Let let people figure it out, dude. Look although, at although, although I do, I do remember the one that I thought it was great. Remember Madison Bumgarner used to get all his panties in a oh, bunch yeah. whenever you home were off him. Especially and, with uh, the league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was all upset. You know, all upset. You know. <laughs> Which whatever, and the best was when Muncie hit one into the bay, mm -hmm. and he's running to first, and he, and and Bumgarner's like, "Get going!" And Muncie's like, "Go get it in the bay." That's so good. That's yeah, you know, if, if you want to stop chirping, yeah, go get it in the bay. Go get the ball in the bay. I thought that was great, dude. That was. Uh... I love it too. I love it. I love it. All right, let's keep the positive vibes going and and go to the Philadelphia, Philadelphia man. First team to twenty wins. Franchise record, nineteen wins in the month of April. I, 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 you you called it, man. Not even their be their best players aren't even their best players at the moment. Like right, everybody's hot, and they're just killing it. They're crushing it, dude. I like that Phillies team. They're dangerous, dude. They got a really good team. They're really dangerous. And like you know, like you said, you got a guy like Schwarber comes out. Bam! There's a three run bomb on the board quickly. <laughs> Hit you with that one for five, but three ribbies. But Trey Turner's hitting almost 350. Harper's Harper. Alec Bohm's just still raking, Chinch. Two for five last night. Mm -hmm. Drove in a run, almost hitting 370 now. Um, you know, these guys are good, man. And I think, dude, I think the big thing about the Phillies, their pitching's good, man. Dude, their rotation might be the so best in a game. The rotation's incredible. And then you leave them in the game with that offense. All you got to do with that, uh, that rotation is, Keep them in the game, and they they have so many guys in that lineup that can one 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 shot strike you for a three run bomb and change everything. So, they, they Dave Dombrowski's done a great job of putting that roster together, dude. I mean, t you. kudos to you, Dave. Love you, Dave. Forget me to Detroit, no six, the World Series. So appreciate forever. Love you so much. Give you a hug every time I see you. And and dude, they have, you're right. They have like Philly type guys. 
You know, they're yeah. Philly type guys on the team. It should, they all look like Bryce Harper looks like a Philadelphia <laughs> Philly. It's weird. Some, you know how it is. Some guys don't look right in some uniform. <laughs> Bryce Harper looks like he's been playing for the Phillies for 74 years. Like He needed, yeah. That's why they need to win the World Series, because you need Harper's legacy to be just as a Philly. Uh-huh. You know, because you're right, dude. He plays that, like, hard-nosed yeah. Philadelphia, you know, right. blue-collar worker. So Jeez. Schwarber. Schwarber's just like that, too, dude. Like, Schwarber's a Philly. Yeah. Oh, Schwarber crushes cheese steaks. Uh, Oh, it's crushing cheesesteaks, dude. Left and right. Uh, uh, let's keep it on the offensive front because, dude, you played baseball. The Dodgers don't strike out. They, they just, Dodgers just don't strike out anymore. It's unbelievable. You got the stat, right? You pulled yeah, it up. Well, what well, did you see that one on Monday? Yeah. They 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 didn't strike out. That's crazy, right? How hard? I mean, I, I mean but, but everyone's like, oh, a strikeout's a part of the game. And you could, no, you don't have to swing and miss. <laughs> you actually, you actually, don't have to swing and miss. You know what I mean? <laughs> You're right. That's pretty impressive, man. They're they're an impressive team. It's amazing. I want to pull this up, Chinch. Hang on. Go ahead. It's amazing that they're uh, as you're doing that. They're nice. 19- so z- zero punch outs, yeah. ten hits, eight walks. That's- they didn't strike out one time, dude. They won eight to four. Ten hits, eight runs, eight walks, zero strikeouts. That's unbelievable. I mean, let's By go. The way, they're playing like they're not playing the the you know what do they call it St. Mary's School for the Blind. Yeah, Little Sisters of the Poor. <laughs> Catholic school. You mess you know what I mean? We got all those things. Uh, yeah, dude. So, so it's you it's can more- do it. Hey, f- kids, you could do it. You can put the ball in play if you want. You certainly can. <laughs> Great. Uh, all right, one more here. I think the Orioles are putting their stamp on that American League East, dude. They've taken they're taking it from the Yankees. I'll add one more thing before you kind of dive into this. I think it's really cool that the two shortstops on these two teams are going to battle each other for the next like fifteen years. Yeah, so it's so good. Very cool. But hey, the Orioles are the class of the American League East at this singular moment in time on the first day of March. I also think Gunnar Henderson might be in the conversation for best player in the game. Do you agree? I completely agree. I mean, guy's got, I think, 10 bombs, hitting almost 300 with almost 1,000 OPS, plays a premier premium position at short, obviously, that you win up the middle. The way he's playing, he's had some huge hits, scored two runs, both runs the other day in that big win. Mm-hmm. He's just a difference maker, dude. And I, like I said, last year when we were on the field, getting to see him firsthand, you got Judge, you got Stanton, you got Volpe, you got... Adley Rutschman, you got all these great players. And then you see Gunnar Henderson, you go, oh, there's the best athlete on the field. Like, no doubt about stands out, looks different, runs different, moves different. Yeah. So it's fun to see him in his second year now, like getting his sea legs under him. You know what I mean? Now he's like, oh, okay, I I get this. I faced you guys Mm -hmm. enough times now to know, you know, now my talent's starting to come out because, uh, you know, Pretty good yeah. player. So it's fun watching him, man. He's 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 becoming must see TV, I think. That's must see TV. Last seven games, two ninety six, four bombs, nine ribbies. That's pretty good. There you go. Yeah, wow. man. This guy's Did legit. Do you see Soto's bomb and him stare down the pitcher, by the way? <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, how do you hit a ball that far to that part of the park as a lefty? That ball was crushed out to Utah Dude. Avenue. Uh, street. Yeah, that ball was crushed. That's unbelievable. That's Paul Paul O'Neill did that once, you know that? He's got. I know. Yeah, I saw it on the highlight. They're like, "That's Paul yeah. O'Neill territory." Yeah. You know what? You what's really cool when it goes on an avenue, they put a little plaque into the onto the uh, onto the road. Oh, so, do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll get like a little plaque. Remember? Oh, that's when, cool, dude. Remember when Griffey went off? Oh, to Derby. That was that was one of the best. Yeah, right? Didn't remember he went off that warehouse? Off the warehouse. Those were day games. Too. Those were day. They used to do the home run derby during the day. Were you still playing when they did it during the day or was it nighttime? I don't think so. No, no, it was nighttime. Why they did it during the day? I always thought that was stupid, but that was one of the last day- dude. I don't. I forgot about that. I don't remember that. Always, it was always like two o'clock in the afternoon. I would like. I, I think I would. Are you sure, Chinch? I am a hundred percent sure. Okay, you need to fact check no, yourself. No, 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 here, no, I'm fact checking myself every year for baseball tonight. I used to do the image uh, history like the home run derby piece yeah the history of the home run derby right 
and it was always so you know so you know that griffey's was in daylight it was daytime i guarantee it hold on that doesn't mean it wasn't like five well, the, the light, I'm not talking. You I'm said two. Five. You said two o'clock. Get the kids out of school. Oh, no, that was, no, it does, it's summertime. School in a summer show. Sorry, 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 sorry. I love when we argue. This is, <laughs> I'm right. Dude, that was a day one. Uh, geometry. It's better to be kind. It's better to be kind than right, Chinch. <laughs> well, I'm right. And screw you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to look this up. I'm bringing this back up tomorrow. Oh, my God. Uh, Hey, by the way, tomorrow I'm going to uh Mets game, day game. Uh I'm gonna catch up with our boy. Hi. Nikki Cass is coming. Nice, dude. Nikki Cass coming with you? Uh we're meeting there together. I don't come. Oh, I don't need tickets, man. Dude, tell tell Nikki his right. stuff's incredible. We love I love what he's doing, man. Oh my god. Well, he- we have to have him we have to have him on one time with his characters. Yeah. Oh, he just got on uh Twitter, by the way, or X or whatever the hell you want. He to wasn't call it. on it? Do you believe that? He's done all this on Instagram? Instagram, yeah, wow. it's really been all on and TikTok Instagram. and TikTok. Mike Vaccaro of the uh, uh, of the New York Post just did a whole article on him. I'll send it to you. Oh, that's week. awesome. Yeah, send that to me. By the way, Mike uh, Vax Wax, they call it. He went to my high school, Mike Vax. It's oh, one last thing. I'm watching the all trying to watch all this post game sound and stuff from all from the brawl and from all the other things. Yeah, you got to take us through one quick thing. I watch like the Milwaukee reporters talking to players and I'm like, they're so nice. And then I'm watching like the trout thing and everybody's so nice. Like, it's so funny. The big, big major, like when, when like Joel Sherman or Dan Shaughnessy used to walk into a post game press conference, it's so much like nastier. Because they're, they're waiting, they're, they're waiting for the, the sound bite. They're waiting. They know they can get under guys' skins. You know, they, they're they not playing the nice game. It's kind of tired, but it's why they're w- – guess what? You know Dan Shaughnessy. You know Joel Sherman. Tell me the other nice guys from Milwaukee that are asking those questions. Do you know them? No, that's true. That's what I'm saying, dude, because they ask the shock <laughs> questions and yeah. nobody wants to ask, and they're, it's a little uneasy. And, you know, Sherm's like, I'm from Brooklyn, and I'm going to – you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I was running the point on the streets. You know what I mean? Here we go. You know what I mean? I'm going to let you know. You know, I want the good answers. I still wish, I still wonder what would have happened if Millar jacked Shaughnessy. Right <laughs> that, that that video of them face to face and Millar had his glove and he's just going like this, talking to Shaughnessy <laughs> in his glove, pretending he was punching a face. <laughs> oh my God. Crazy, dude. Crazy. Yeah. All right, man. All right, All right man. Catch up I'll... later and find out what time we can record tomorrow because, like I said, Awesome, brother. Dude, are hey, we? Hey. Are, uh, I'm wondering, are we still giving away the yes. uh, Yankee jersey? Because the um, subscribers hasn't moved. Yes, please listen. Subsc- all you gotta do, all you gotta do is download, subscribe, tell your friends. It's not that hard. It's not. If We're not asking for much. Look, we have fans. I know we have a very good fan base. Uh, we have great fans. We have an incredible fan base, and we, we know that. Not- you, we talk back with you. We we interact <laughs> with you. Get one of your friends, everybody who's a diehard fan right now, today, yes. here's yes. a rule. Get one of your friends to just hit subscribe to our YouTube page. Just one friend. That's all it takes. One friend. And we're going to see who listened because we checked the page. And if it goes from 3,008 3, to 3,008, we'll know that nobody's listening to us. <laughs> and we know that 90% of the people listening do not hit subscribe and download. Shame. Just hit subscribe. We don't even, don't even hit the download. We're not worried about that. Hit subscribe. <laughs> All right, Chinch. <laughs>